I didn't even know people could read like this. <laughs> oh, hear that. It's beautiful. <laughs> it really is. I want you to look at this patient. What celebrity do you think her nose looks like? This guy was in with Ben Stiller. Yes, they did yes. Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Yes, yeah. they did all the movies. By the way, how did this happen? All I know is that her last surgery was a long time ago. So let's meet her and let's hear her story. Can you please send him Brittany? Brittany. Hello. So what happened? I've always hated my nose. And at 19, I decided oh, I'm gonna get a nose job. All right. And then about a year later, I noticed that on the left side, I started to get this indent. So I went in for the revision. And then about six months later, it just got gradually worse. And your nose has gotten increasingly more crooked. The whole thing is getting worse. What about your breathing? Oh, my breathing's awful. Getting a little bit more breathing, some air through there would be great. And the lumpy nose thing doesn't really work for me. I would just like it to be smooth, uh, straight tur. What happens is the skin shrink wraps around the cartilage and makes it look like this. And if you have thin skin, you can see more of what we call bassa, which are these sharp points of cartilage. So you got two extremely difficult things, crookedness one, two, cartilage warping. And to try to fix it, it's really hard to do. How do you fix this? <laughs> you have weak cartilage that's fallen in, fallen over, collapsed, we need to either replace some of it or add strength to it. Make sense? Yes. Especially we need some cartilage that's firm and strong enough to help fight some of those forces and push it the other way. So we're gonna have to use a piece of rib cartilage to reconstruct every different section of your nose. For Brittany's surgery, I will start by opening the nose while Dr. Peng harvests rib. Next, I'll perform a revision septoplasty and a turbinate outfracture. Then I will perform osteotomies to straighten the nasal bones and add in septal support grafts, bilateral rim grafts, and a septal extension graft to give her more support and counter effect the crooked cartilage. Finally, I'll add a batten graft along her septum to finish, hopefully leaving Brittany with a much straighter nose. I feel more beautiful every day, and I want my daughter to feel just as, if not more confident, than I'm starting to feel. Hey! Hi! Hi, Hi guys. You look beautiful. Before my surgery, my nose was lumpy, crooked, and swung to the right. Not only did my nose look awful, but I had a hard time breathing. But now, thanks to Dr. Nassif, my nose is smooth, so straight, and I can breathe like breathing, and it's like amazing. Like, I've never, I didn't even know people could breathe like this. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it really is. Here's to me. <laughs> Cheers to 40. <laughs> I'm feeling 40 and fierce. <laughs> I want to get your opinion. What do you have? This is David. Take a look at his nose. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I can't even wrap my brain around the anatomy. I mean, it's like a melted wax. I was going to say more of, of a, a sledgehammer to the side of his nose. Is that really something that can be fixed? I don't know. Even by you? My mother had an IUD, and she got pregnant with me, so I'm the one percent, so... And she called you a disaster? No, I, <laughs> she did not. <laughs> I've had two surgeries, one when I was five. They had taken rib, and they started building up a structure in my nose. At the age of five? Yeah. That surgery alone can cause yeah. a problem with the growth plates in your nose and even growing. That might have prohibited some of your growth. I noticed things kind of shifted into the position that it is now. That's when kind of the headaches started. But I've been to a neurologist and couldn't find anything wrong with me. So. And you're still having these same exact I headaches I do, now? yeah. And they're not migraines? Uh, the neurologist called them cluster headaches. Yeah, there you oh, go. Yeah, cluster headaches. Yeah. I'm not convinced yeah. that this is from an IUD. I agree. I I'm more convinced that general. this was a congenital issue. Your left side developed normally, your right side didn't. Yeah. Hmm. That baby's going to be moving around all the time, swimming around in that uterus. It seems a little hard to believe that an IUD can just sit on a baby's face the whole time and cause that kind of damage. My whole world changed. You know, I've been told this all my life. Now you're, you're telling me it's this other congenital problem. It almost does look like a cleft lip nasal deformity. On that whole side. Because even if you did have an IUD pushing on your nose, it's not gonna cause 
this bone to be way outside over here. It's just not going to cause some of these defects. That's the word that I didn't want to hear. Defect. Well, you're defective now, right? There wasn't something that made you defective. It was just you. It feels awful to have lived 51 years of my life having one story and then right now it changed. For David's surgery, I will start by opening the nose while Dr. Peng harvests rib. We will remove the rib that was used in his previous surgeries and then assess the anatomy of his nose. Next, we will fix his deviated septum to open his airway and use spreader grafts to push out the collapsed bone on the right side of his nose. Next, we will use a septal extension graft to lengthen the tip. And finally, a right alar batten graft to add structure to his nasal valve, hopefully leaving David with a more normal looking nose. Tip color looks good, and I'm very really happy. It looks pretty great. This whole story started when I was in the womb. My mother had an IUD when I was born, and my nose didn't look like everybody else's. All along, I was told that it was the IUD that caused the problem. Dr. Nasa shed light on my unique congenital diagnosis. And now my nose definitely looks a lot better. It makes me feel a lot better. And that's the best thing. The world belongs to us. It's beautiful. Hmm? Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> with me now. Yeah. New nose and all, right? Yeah. Before my surgery, my nose was absolute trash. It wasn't symmetrical. It was shifted to the left. I couldn't breathe, and I was having horrible headaches. I hated looking in the mirror, and I thought that my deformed nose was all that people would see when they'd look at me. But now, not only did Dr. Nassif give me a symmetrical, functional, and good-looking nose, but I'm no longer the family IU disaster. <laughs> I was skeptical at first, and just everybody kind of pushed and did all this for me, and I'm ready to move on from here. Dr. Debro and Dr. Nassif, I can't even explain how grateful I am. Thank you. Voila, a pitcher speaks oh. multi-thousands of words. That's oh the sharpest my. tip I've ever seen. Oh. Look at that. That's not real, that's a Photoshop. I think that's just a, a piece of her cartilage left from her one surgery and if that thing is about to pop out through the skin. Bring Holly in. Can you please send in Holly? Holly. Holly, hey, nice to meet you, nice Dr. Nassif. Nice to meet you. When I was five or six, I broke my nose. And once I hit my 30s, I got engaged, had surgery. How long ago was this, roughly? This was five years ago. And I guess when the doctor came out of surgery, he's like, oh, the surgery went great. He's like, I pulverized her nose. Pulverized? Pulverized <laughs> means to destroy. Bottom of the list of things you want to hear postoperatively. Just kept getting sharper and pointier at the end, like a ski slope. Were you married at that time or what? I got married well after because my nose started changing so much. Finally, I was like, we were engaged five years, and I was like, it's time to get married. So, so you delayed getting married because of the way your nose looked? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it looks like my nose got slammed in a door, and then it just stayed that way. You know, I do I do have to say, I mean, I'm worried about your nose. When Dr. Dubrow and I looked at your photos, we said, what, what the hell happened? happened? When we see a nose like yours, we usually think that maybe you had seven or eight surgeries. Yeah, yeah. that you, would make sense. You're at that point where you have a completely overdone nose. Never, 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 never ever, ever. seen a nose look like yours after one surgery. Ever. That pointed. We would love to do anything we can to help you. So there's a gap in your nasal bones right here. Mm -hmm. It's called an open roof deformity, and there's two ridges of bones. I take cartilage, and I add this glue-like material, and I might be able to even just fill in that little gap. The middle third, we have to add cartilage again, called spreader grafts. The third part of this is going to be the tip. So you from what it appears to me, don't have usable tip cartilage. Okay. I would have to cut out all your natural tip cartilage and take new cartilage and make you a tip. Wow. Here is my dilemma and one thing I'm worried about. He usually doesn't hear me say this. I'm worried about how your nose is gonna turn out. For Holly's surgery today, I'll begin by opening the nose while Dr. Peng harvests rib. Next, I will remove her tip cartilage 
and file down the bumps along her bridge. Then I will use spreader grafts to build out the dorsum and straighten her nose, and ailer batten grafts and rim grafts to open the airway and make the nostrils symmetric. Finally, I will use dice cartilage glue grafts to rebuild her tip before placing rib perichondrium to combat shrink ravage of the skin and give an overall smoother appearance. Beautiful nose. Looking back, I feel like I'm on the other side of a mountain now. I no longer have a pulverized nose. I don't have to hide and shrink back in the corner I'm like a sideshow freak. Up, I'm gonna... Stunning. I finally feel like a beautiful bride, and now the photographer, she can get as close to this nose as she wants. I'm a Hello. hot babe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before my surgery, the tip of my nose was so pointy, I looked like I lived in Whoville. I had a ski slope for a profile. It was crooked, and there was a chunk missing on the right side. But now, thanks to Dr. Nassif, my tip is rounded smooth, and my nose is straight and symmetrical. I'm gonna put the photos up on the wall. My mom says she wants an eight by 10. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Dr. Nassif. Terry Dubrow. So I had a nice little bump right here, <laughs> and I had a golf ball on the end. What happened? So after the first surgery, the hump was gone, and so a majority of this ball was gone. After three months, when the swelling goes down, basically, right. what did you actually start seeing? So this started to drop. And then there was a something right here. We needed to wait till at least six months before he would go in and do any sort of a revision. How's your breathing? My How's breathing is horrible. I have to wear nose strips oh, you almost are. every night. Besides the breathing presently, is the cosmetic aspects doing anything now to you? I don't want these humps here, especially this huge, huge one. She'd like a symmetrical nose. Actually, I went to another consultation, a couple, and one of them told me I get one more chance. Yeah. For Lisa's surgery, I'll start by opening her nose while Dr. Peng harvests rib. We'll use spreader grafts and ailer batten grafts to open her airway and add structure to her nostrils. Next, we'll elevate her drooping columella. Lastly, we not fracture her turbinates to help her breathing. But we needed out aggressive measures for aggressive findings like this, so. Thank you so much. I have been waiting for a nose like this that's functional and beautiful for, what, 29 years? Now, I just feel good. I'm ready to believe. Before my surgery with Dr. Nassif, my nose was lumpy and bumpy, and it was collapsing, and I could barely breathe. And now, my nose is smooth and beautiful, and I've been able to trash everything I used to use to breathe because my airway is wide open. I had really bad allergies. I really, nasal drip or what? I had bad nasal drip, and they prescribed a bunch of different nasal sprays. I was using it like five times a day, at least five years. Ooh. We suggested surgery. So did the doctor say they were gonna do septoplasty? Septoplasty. Tribunoplasty? I heard that one too, yes. So that's a functional surgery that doesn't change, usually, the outside appearance of the nose. And I had no problem with the cosmetic side of it. So what happened? After two weeks, when all of the packing started coming out, he had me sit in a shower. I would blow it out gently. He suggested a revision. That's when I started to notice a lot of this was really not it was how it used in? to be. Yes. So only after the second surgery, yes. so your nose started different. looking different. Yeah, just going on a date and eating in front of somebody, having to like breathe through my mouth. When food is falling out of my mouth on a first date, that does not go over well. And so and I've lost my love life as well. Today for Jessica's surgery, Dr. Peng will harvest rib while I begin by opening up the nose. Next, we'll assess the septum before rebuilding the nose with spreader grafts so she can breathe better, and a septal extension graft for support. Finally, we will use a dice cartilage glue graft to build up the dorsum and correct her saddle nose deformity. That looks great. Beautiful result. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I'm finally able to breathe, and I'm in love with my nose. I catch myself staring in the mirror quite often. Now it's more like, let's go, let's go outside, let's do something. I just am enjoying life a lot more than I was. Before my surgery, my nose looked like a rocky mountain range, and I just simply couldn't breathe. After three failed surgeries, I had lost all my trust in doctors. But now, thanks to Dr. Nassif, my bridge is straight, 
and my breathing ability has easily gone up 60%. You know, I feel like I could run a marathon. Dr. Nassif and Dr. DeBro definitely changed my life. I'm actually seeing someone. I feel like Dr. Nassif definitely helped me get a boyfriend. <laughs>